This video highlights some of the special features and functions available on a multimeter. Let's start with the min-max function. So let's say you wanted to load test a battery in the car. Simply press the min-max button, start the vehicle, and it will record the lowest and highest readings available. As long as we have a reading above 9.6 volts for the minimum, we have a good battery. So just press the button once, you will see the highest value. Press it again, you'll see the lowest value, which is 10.36, so we have a good battery. Press it again, and you will see an average reading. And one more time, and you will see the current voltage reading. Now, if you wanted to reset, simply turn your meter off and turn it back to the setting that you want. Now we're going to hook up our black lead to ground, and we're going to hook up our red lead to the output terminal on the alternator. Now what we're measuring here is the rectifier bridge. We're measuring AC volts. So we're going to turn our dial on our meter to the AC voltage sign. Not DC volts, but AC volts. And the objective is we want to see how much AC or alternating current voltage leaks out of the alternator. Now this meter will auto range for us so right now it's showing millivolts and that's good. And we don't want to see anything more than 400 millivolts coming out of this alternator. Ideally even less than 300 millivolts. So we want to make sure that we load up the engine really well, turn on the headlights, turn on the rear defroster and any other accessories that we can to load up this alternator so it puts out the maximum amount of charge. So we want to make sure that that rotor internally is spinning very quickly. So we're also going to rev the engine up to about 2000 RPMs to make sure that this alternator is putting out the maximum that it can. Okay. Now also we want to record, so we're going to use our min-max feature, press min-max button, and then we're going to raise the idle up. So now that we're done with our test, we just press the min-max button again, and we can see that we have 156 millivolts of AC voltage. So this is well below our 400 millivolt maximum, so that means the rectifier bridge inside our alternator is good. The next test that we're going to perform is the diode check test, and you can see the symbol for diodes right there. Now how we perform this test is we leave our meter leads in the volt ohm diode check jack and the common port as well. Then you turn your meter dial over to the diode check function and now your meter is ready to measure diodes. Now what the diodes in the alternator do, which is basically a collection of diodes called the rectifier bridge, is that it is supposed to take the alternating current and turn it into direct current because the battery can only be charged by direct current. Now how these diodes are able to change alternating current into direct current is basically it's a one-way check valve. So alternating current tends to flow in one direction and then back again in the other direction. Diodes will only allow the current to flow in the one direction that leads straight to the battery and all of your other accessories. So some of the problems you can encounter with bad diodes are a battery not properly charging, also um, warning indicators on your dash, as well as flickering lights and some other electronic problems. Now before we begin to do this diode check, we have to make sure that our circuit is disconnected because it is a lot like measuring resistance. So I've disconnected the power cable going from the alternator to the battery and also I've disconnected the negative cable on the battery. So this rectifier bridge is isolated from the rest of the circuit. Now the alternator produces current and voltage and sends it out through the B positive or battery positive terminal. So what we want to do is we want to hook up our black meter lead or COM lead 
to the battery positive terminal on the alternator. Now, since we know that current is normally produced inside the alternator and then sent through the rectifier bridge, the meter is going to push current through the red lead and through the rectifier bridge and out towards the black lead. Now, hopefully during this diode check we should see a small amount of voltage, whatever the meter is producing, show up on our meter. So we do have voltage being sent out the battery positive terminal back to the meter and it is telling us that we have half a volt. So that's good. Now, the diodes should send current in one direction but block current in the other direction. So what we also have to do is take our meter leads and switch them around. Now when we switch the meter leads around, the meter will still send current through the red lead and receive current from the black lead. But as you can see, it's giving us an OL sign, which means open loop, which means that current is not flowing through that rectifier bridge or through those diodes at all. And that is what is considered a good rectifier bridge. Now what we're gonna measure is Hertz. Now measuring Hertz is basically the same as measuring DC volts. So we turn our dial to DC volts, and then we just press this button HZ so that we can measure Hertz. Now when we hook up our meter leads, we are hooking it up the same way as if we were measuring DC volts. So black lead to ground and red lead attached to the sensor signal. Now we can see on our meter that we have 2877 Hertz or 2.8 kilohertz. Now at idle, that is normal. So the sensor, what it does is it measures the flow of incoming air. So the higher the Hertz reading, the more air is coming in. So now that we have our base reading at idle, now we're going to rev the engine to about 2000 RPM and see what we get. 4.9 kilohertz was the highest reading that we were able to achieve on this test. And then when we idle back down, we can see it goes back to about 2.8 kilohertz. Even though this hertz button doesn't indicate it, you can press it again and then you'll get a percentage sign. The percentage sign stands for duty cycle, which means how often something is turned on versus how often it is turned off. So, whenever you see this percentage, it does not necessarily always go up and down like frequency does depending on the sensor. So sometimes you want to measure frequency and sometimes you want to measure duty cycle. Now if we press it again, we'll see that we'll have a base voltage reading. And that voltage reading is really just an average of how many volts the meter sees. An additional function that this automotive meter has versus the other one that I was using for Hertz and duty cycle is that this meter actually has a millisecond function as well. So it's the same button as Hertz and duty cycle percentage, but it also has milliseconds. And this is really handy when you are measuring the on time that an injector is on for. So basically, the more an injector is on, the more fuel it's going to be squirting into the engine. So at idle, we only need a little bit of fuel, but at higher lows and higher RPM, we need more fuel and we're going to see that on the meter. So we just turn our meter to DC volts, just like we do for everything else, have our leads in the same position, and we'll be able to see that this meter is going to immediately pick up voltage. But it's really picking up voltage from the charging system and not the millisecond reading that we want. So if we want to actually see milliseconds, we just press the Hertz button. Then we press it again for duty cycle, but that's not what we want. Now we're going to see milliseconds in DC voltage. So what we're going to observe here is that at idle we have 3.1 milliseconds. And that means that this injector is open for a very short amount of time, only 3 milliseconds. 
So this is pretty handy to know if you have a misfire on that cylinder um, or some sort of a runs rough condition on that one cylinder. So what we're going to do is we're going to rev the engine up and we're going to see the milliseconds increase, which means that there's more fuel being put into the engine. Okay, so we got pretty high there. We actually got into the 40 millisecond range. This next function is really handy if you're trying to measure continuity, also known as resistance, of a long piece of wire and you're not able to actually visually see the meter screen as you are measuring. So what you can do is you simply turn your dial over to the ohms sign and you'll also notice that there is a little sound wave sign right next to it and there is a button up top that you can press to activate the beep signal. So essentially what's going to happen is anytime there's continuity between whatever it is you're measuring, then the meter will beep. So we're going to use this long 10 foot piece of jumper wire that is homemade to give you an example. We always want to make sure that our test equipment that we're using is good, so it's always a good idea to check continuity. So we just Hook up our meter leads just like we normally would for measuring resistance. Okay. Another handy function to use when measuring resistance is the relative function or delta function. So it's always a good idea to test our meter leads. So just turn your meter to ohms and you want to touch your two leads together. Now you'll notice that the meter says that we have two tenths of an ohm resistance. So anything more than one would mean that you really do need to replace your meter leads. Now when you do this you want to make sure that you don't touch the ends of the meter with your fingers. But when we're measuring something we don't necessarily want to deal with this two tenths of an ohm extra reading added on top of our regular circuit. So we just touch our meter leads together, press the delta button, and then our leads are zeroed out. So let's go ahead and try it. Okay. Now, instead of reading two tenths of an ohm, our meter reads zero ohms. Okay, so sometimes when you're working underneath the dash of a vehicle, um, it's very dark in there and there's just not a lot of room and it's difficult to see everything. So a very nice function is the backlight function on it. Um, it's kind of dim for use underneath the hood most of the time, but for underneath the dash, it works quite well.